Determined to die, with or without the help of her physicians, the patient began spitting out pills or hiding them under her tongue. She refused further testing and demanded to go home. Finally, having performed all diagnostic measures that he could think of, her physician permitted her to return home. Years later, the doctor reflected on the, upon the suffering he and his colleagues had added to his dying patient and with their endless tels, he, tests and ineffectual treatment. He had not done well by her towards the end, he said. She had told him that if, in the, if the illness flared up again and fatally, that she did not want to linger on and expected him to save her from the protracted, helpless, dragging out of suffering. But he could not do it, he said. When the time came, his duty as a doctor prevented him. In my view, the circumspect view, uh, we have no duty to utilize treatments that to a reasonable degree of medical certainty either will not work or will be repeatedly or continually needed with the expectation that the patient will die regardless of the treatment in a very short period of time. In this case, um, I think there was a failure to recognize um, that we had reached the limits of medicine um, available in the, at the time and that treatment for Eleanor Roosevelt uh, w was treatment for someone overmastered by disease um, and we'd reached the limits. But the goals of medicine are threefold, to cure sometimes, to relieve often, and to comfort always. Um, I think that was true um, in the 13th century and I think it's true in the 21st century as well if we learn how to use our technological prowess wisely.